What's up, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Learning Quick. Super excited to have on another amazing guest today in Mateo from Data CMS. And we're going to talk about uh, Data CMS, why it's cool, why you should check it out. Uh, we'll talk about the Jamstack and headless CMS options and any other questions that people have. Uh, but Mateo, welcome to the stream. Do you want to give uh, yeah. a little bit of an introduction to yourself? Thank you very much for uh, having me. So uh, I'm a software engineer by um, uh, training. And so I had more than 10 years of professional experience in the in the software industry right now. And um, I've been uh, within uh, with Dato since um, yeah, more than two years now. And um, I've been doing tech support and some sales as well. And so, yeah, um, talking about Dato CMS, uh, it's a headless CMS. So we offer um, two APIs. One is the REST API and one is a GraphQL API uh, um, from which you can you can fetch your, your content. And um, um, I, I mean, uh, I suppose you are familiar with the concept and uh, the, the CMS in particular is uh, very appreciated from our customers, uh, especially from for the the UI. Mm, a lot of, of our customers tell me that they switched from other CMSs because of uh, the UI, um, because it's simpler, and it makes more sense, and also um, being an agency uh, that created the product, we try to make. Uh, to make create creating new projects, setting up uh, new projects that as simple as possible. So we took a lot of decisions uh, up front to make it simpler. Uh, like we uh, we have an image manipulation service and CDN that is embedded in the service. You don't you don't need to set up anything. is is all included. Also in the price, uh, it's all included. Um, there's a lot of traffic included already. Uh, same stuff with um, a video encoding and streaming service that uh, you can use. And so all that is we try to make the process of setting up a new project as simple as possible, basically. Um, and then on top of that, we have some cool features that uh, I hope I can show you later. Yeah, that we'll we'll get into. We'll talk about like using GraphQL. Uh, and you talked about the difference between um, GraphQL and the REST API. So GraphQL will be just for kind of the, the read-only stuff. If you're yep. um, using it as a regular headless CMS and you're just reading the information and displaying it in a static site, something like uh, Next.js or Gatsby or Nux, Gridsum, all the different uh, amazing frameworks that are out there. And then uh, you can do like administration, administrative stuff and, and mutations and things with the, with the regular uh, REST API. And one of the cool things I think we'll get to see too is uh, real-time updates. Uh, so doing this like, the socket connection thing where uh, data CMS is going to pump out um, notifications basically as things change so that real time you can see them be reflected on uh, the site that I think is really cool. Yeah. And you mentioned like the the UI just like looking and feeling really good, which I, I wholeheartedly agree. Like I, I was looking in there and I was I'll talk about this a little bit more, but um, I think there's a lot of like integrations and things that are just already there. They're kind of like what you'd expect. They're ready to go, and and they look and and feel really good, which is one of the kind of stumbling blocks with with some other options. Is um, there's a lot of things you can do and a lot of functionality and features that you can add in the space. Putting them all together and doing it right in a way that still makes sense for users is a tough thing to do. But I would say um, I would say that that looks pretty good on my end as well. Yeah, I mean, one of the principles we have behind uh, our development is not to add all of the features of the world. Um, <laughs> one one reason is because we are a small team. We are a very small team. Uh, we are bootstrapped. We don't have any venture capital backing us. And, and we want to stay small and profitable for as long as possible. So we need to maintain our code and, and, and keep it efficient and uh, fast to change so we cannot add all the features that uh, everyone asked for uh, and so we try to keep it clean and then as simple as possible uh, also on the interface side so yeah you've got um cute guy canal again i crack up every time i say uh, his name 
uh, said that he just looked at the site and uh, said it was very looked very nice and was very easy to understand as well. So I think that is a little reinforcement of of the things that you just said. Um, I'm kind of curious. Like this is not something that we talked about beforehand, but from your experience as a as a developer or like your day to day stuff as a developer, what sort of technologies, like languages, frameworks, tools, that sort of stuff, are you working with uh, behind the scenes with um, with Data CMS? Yeah, and uh, so um, the API is built in uh, Ruby on Rails. Uh, so it's a Rails API project, um, both the REST and the GraphQL APIs. And then we have the CMS interface and um, the dashboard where you can manage your project. And these are um, two static React applications, uh, some React applications. And then the um, real-time updates API is um, an Elixir project. Cool. I've never, I've never used. I really know almost nothing about Elixir, uh, but having having those real time updates is is really nice. And then uh, Ruby on Rails back in for all the API stuff, including GraphQL, and then um, React for the front end. Yeah, and um, the APIs are hosted on Heroku, uh, so the oh, platform cool. as a service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And awesome. We are, we are still, and uh, yes, and in database, we are on, on Postgres. Cool. I feel like Postgres has really grown a lot. Um, one of the, another, um, I guess, I don't know if, I guess it kind of falls into a similar space as Headless CMS, but uh, Superbase is like a an open source Firebase alternative, and they really made the big bet that like doing it on Postgres would be better than the NoSQL stuff that they were doing at, um, at Firebase. So yeah, I've, I feel like I've, I've heard more and more about people um, loving and and wanting to use Postgres instead of some of the other options that are out there. Yeah, it's it's very very powerful. It scales very well for us. Uh, we still have everyone everyone on just one big database. It's working fine. At some point, we will start doing some sharding, but for now, uh, it's very simple to hold everything in one big database, and it's working perfectly fine. Yeah. That's great. Uh, we've got a comment from Avnish in the chat. Who um, Avnish has been writing a bunch of articles and participating in hackathons, um, and he said that he's going to uh, give uh, Data CMS a try for the first time today, which is great. Nice. Uh, we also I'll give a quick shout out um, on the Osiro side. So Osiro and Hashnode are collaborating on um, a hackathon for the month of August. So that is open now through the end of August, and basically you build an open source project and write an article about it and include details. And that's how you enter to participate. And then there's $10,000 worth of prizes. And I wonder, like, we haven't we haven't done this. And maybe this is an opportunity for us to talk more in the future. Uh, but to do an all zero and, um, and data of CMS integration at some point to see how that would work. That would be a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially for, uh, like, I mean, one of the uh, interesting things we've been asked, we've been asked about that uh, already by a few customers. Like having the uh, a single sign on mm -hmm. managed by auth zero that could be very very interesting for us yeah i would be I would be more than happy to mm -hmm. one to to take a look at some potential options myself, uh, but there's also people that are much more technical and prepared to handle those conversations uh, specifically in our partner integration team so they they work with partners to get some documentation and um, and some support for people that are trying to to do that so we can we can talk more about that offline. <laughs> yeah, cool. I will. Um, I'll give one more shout out, um, and this is uh, personal for me. So the the Compressed FM podcast that I co-host with Amy Dutton is now sponsored uh, by Data CMS. So Data CMS, I think the first episode that we have uh, you listed as a sponsor went live on Tuesday, and then I will have you for at least the next seven episodes, which we're both excited about, and is also a great reason why uh, doing this and and seeing some hands on demos and and having this conversation is really useful. But all of that said, are you? Um, do you want to share your screen and and we can start to take a look at um, some hands-on stuff again for people that are interested? Yes. Um, we talked about uh, GraphQL um, endpoint for being able to query the data. We talked about the real-time stuff. We talked about image uh, manipulation or transformations. So we'll talk about all that stuff as we go through. Uh, if you have questions about this, uh, just make sure to throw those in the chat, and we'll uh, we'll make sure to get them uh, get them covered. Okay, so can you see my screen now? That's it. Yep, I can see it. Great. So um, this is just a Data CMS homepage, uh, just to get you uh, acquainted with the with the site. Um, it's just um, 
here you can you can find all the details if you want to know more um but i'll i'll jump straight into one project just to show you how it looks the interface from uh, from the inside so uh, this is um, a blog like a classic um, blog um, where you have a list of posts uh, here for example that's um collection oh, let me switch to oh and this is yeah uh, this is in english this is in italian <laughs> yeah which i feel I like i didn't so... notice before <laughs> and and this may be like maybe a very maybe something you wouldn't have even called out in terms of like a benefit but that's actually really cool that you just yeah like through a drop down can change globalization to be yeah, to be in exactly. a bunch of different languages yeah yeah we have a bunch of languages um and all if if you want to add more uh, we we uh, support our customers uh, sending translations and uh, we give some credit back like it's uh, i think it's 500 euros for a full translation hmm. uh, it's it's a lot of work but uh, i mean yeah uh, i think it's uh, it's good reward and um yeah so we got we got some translations already and and some of, of them are are maintained by by the team itself and so we, yeah of course, being being in Italy, and we need to think about <laughs> localization from the beginning, uh, That's right. and also, yeah, all the this example is not um, is not localized, but you can you can of course manage localization in in uh, of all the content. Yeah, uh, maybe we can we can uh, have a look later at that. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, just a classic interface for um, for editing a post. And can um, I ask you a question? One of the things sure. that I'm always looking at in comparison of different headless CMS options is what does like, what does the basically the body content like? What does that look like? Um, so you've got the content section in there, and it's like a it's a rich text editor in here. So, um, so this is you... a custom uh, structured okay. text field. Uh, so as you can see you can go in this uh, focus mode uh, where you can add uh, elements and. If you type slash, you can add custom blocks that you can define. Oh, nice. So you can define your own. Um, I can show you how it works. And then we have implemented some uh, some the standard basic stuff HTML that you would features. expect. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And um, what what uh, it outputs is um, a JSON uh, a JSON object and for which we 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 offer some some tools to translate it into html yep. and then you need to pass your own uh Styling. renderer for for the yeah. custom blocks so okay. for example if you go here in the blocks library so we have just defined an image block um, that uh, has an image inside but you can define your your like call to action block or whatever you want, actually. Ah, uh, cool. just, yeah. just a simple example. And in the um, in the block, you can add like uh, a text uh, text field. And, and um, by the way, you're getting a couple of comments in the chat. Um, mm. The use of the slash and then the the like populate. What that is really really useful for me um because one of the things i've struggled with sometimes is like if i want to do a header i have to like go up and click a drop down menu and go to h2 or something and i'm like like i'm a developer right like i want to keep keep my hands on the keyboard i can type out things so the slash is actually really useful and and um avnish uh was saying that this is very similar to what you do for like commands in, in discord or something like that where you yeah, slash exactly. and it populates yeah. your available commands. so that is that's yeah. great i i love that exactly and so, yeah you can build blocks so it was going slow but for example here you can link to um, an existing model so you can specify this is a an in, a link field that you can use to link um other models other records inside the cms so for example you can and you can specify uh, which models can be the target of the link um it's being slow i don't know why but um yeah the idea also one, one very powerful concept in in that cms um are the validations 
So we have very strong validations that are enforced both on the client side and also on the API side, meaning that um, if you mark a field as required, uh, it will always be present um, yeah. on, on your uh, API response, uh, both on, uh, on the draft endpoint uh, for, for preview content and on the published one, mm. um, which means that um, on, the, on the front end code, you can, you can be sure that the data format that you specify is going to be consistent. Yeah. Um, so you can avoid writing all the if statements yeah. uh, when, when uh, like <laughs> an image is present or not, yeah. what it should look like, uh, and great. implement all the CSS, make sure that it doesn't break <laughs> if something is missing, you know. That's very uh, that's very timely. I just my the video I released on YouTube this morning is about the is about optional chaining in JavaScript and and how you could how you can use that to help prevent doing if this exists then do this if this exists do that and blah blah blah. Um, so not only is optional chaining an option in JavaScript to help make that simpler, but if you make your fields required using the validation, you don't even have to do that. You know that that thing's going to be there. Data CMS is going to guarantee that for you. Yeah, exactly. And and um, if you add a validation when you already have some records inside, um, which can be useful if you don't want to enforce all the validation from the beginning, but you add them later, uh, we mark all the records uh, that are not satisfying all the validations as invalid. Mm -hmm. And so you can also filter by record validity if you want. So cool. um, yeah. yeah, that's a way for upgrading and adding validations while going uh, yeah so each kind of field has its own uh, custom validations and that you can uh, you can uh, add there uh, maybe i can show you like an inter interesting one is on the on the image one so you can specify like oh, wow. uh, an, uh, file size file size or what kind of uh, asset and also the image animations in pixels if you want so that yeah. you don't you are sure that you, you're not uploading like a too big uh, or yeah exactly too big I guess or too that would small be, image. yeah that's awesome um yeah and these these blocks for for context for people you can define these these blocks here and these are like custom elements where you define what properties they have and then inside of your, and I want to make sure it's not rich text. You've got a specific, um, yeah. You got a specific uh, word that you use. Um, yeah, is a structured text. Structured text. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, inside of your structured text, now you can use those elements that you just created, and you can trigger creating one of those with the slash. Like you could do exactly. slash in the name of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got a great comment from uh, Pokeballs. Pokeball says, "I'm sold. Take my money." <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> You've also, I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this or not, because I'm, I'm not familiar with the, what this is, but uh, Rando Calrissian in the chat is asking about uh, single sign-on, but uh, CAS single sign-on, C-A-S? I'm not sure what that is specifically. Um, um, no, we, do, we don't have that. We support uh, SAML as a protocol for... Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, thanks for answering that. And, and so now that we have defined the call to action, for example, I mean, that... that example yeah it's here and so awesome. yeah and then you go and fill out those details yeah the cool thing is that you can define a front-end component that matches the block um and so you can reuse the block across different models and so yeah you can have your library of design components that can be reused all across your uh, your site and uh, it makes the development of um like landing pages with defined modules or um, long form content with like like this blog post um with blocks very very fast because you you define them once and then you can reuse them whatever you want sweet and yeah we have a react component um just show it quickly so for structured text so you can have that's a, a default component you can you can use and then to make your life a bit easier and so you get the json this is the an example json mm -hmm. and and so you pass it in 
the structured text component and it will output uh, the HTML for the uh, oh. standard set of um, mm, options that we have implemented. And then if you have your custom blocks, you should pass uh, a render uh, like render block and then you switch based on the uh, name of the block the type, yeah and then and how you, you actually pass, want it rendered yeah yeah you can pass your components again that's awesome i've got got a similar thing in with my sanity set up so for my personal site mm -hmm. uh with their portable text almost the exact same thing uh you exactly. have to tell it how to render something that they don't know so you define these custom serializers is what they what they call them uh, in Sanity. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that makes sense. And it gives you, again, yeah. complete control over how you want them to be displayed. It's a very similar concept. Uh, I mean, to, to be fair, most of the headless CMS right now are, have um, very similar features. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yep. a matter of preference in the interface and uh, the developer, developer experience, probably the pricing. Some projects fit better. Uh, with a pricing or with another or and that yeah. that comes down to, to use cases too like if you're exactly. if you're solely using this as a static um a, for statically generated content you're you probably don't need that many api calls but if you're doing something where you're also storing um real time like you're storing your likes and comments for posts and things like that that need to update all the time then you may need something with more api calls so i think there's a couple like it always yeah. comes down to those details. Um, but going back to like this sort of stuff that we just talked about, like with the serializers and stuff, that is a is a pretty standard thing because you have to have some way to convert what you do in the platform to uh, your actual project. But um, again, like I, I want to go back to, and I think people have already uh, agreed with this as well, the interface here just looks so great that if, if it's more or less the same on the output side, now you're starting to really pay attention to the editor and people are seeming, uh, seeming to really enjoy that. Uh, we do have a question from Avnish really quickly um, for just other common use cases other than a blog. I feel like blog is like the stereotypical one that we see in sure. all the getting started stuff. Do you have a few examples of, of ways people have used this for uh, something other than a blog? Yeah, I mean, I can I can show you um, our own CMS. Uh, so, so you can see how we use it for datacms.com. Nice. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great, yeah. I mean... It would be really awkward if, if you were using a different headless CMS exactly. for your internal <laughs> stuff. So it's great that you're actually using it. <laughs> exactly. So we always have a blog internally, which is very similar. Um, so all this uh, side sidebar here can be organized as you like. So you mm -hmm. can you can create custom elements uh, to group um, group models or to give editors uh, indications about how the content is organized. Um, it's and for us it's easier as we know the ins and ends out uh, of everything but i've seen very good uh, setups with very nested uh, settings all well organized it was easy mm -hmm. for me even if i didn't know anything to move around that was very nice and um, one thing i want to call out that's on the screen now is you've got an seo editor is that built in mm -hmm. to data cms or is that an extension that you can add uh, no, that's built in. Uh, so uh, that's um, a custom field that you can add. Yeah. I think wow. we also have it in here. That's awesome, especially the like Twitter and Facebook previews. Because mm -hmm. that's, I feel like I always, I'm always having to go to like the, I don't even know what the, like you can Google it and you can see like a tr Twitter card renderer, but to have that right here next to your content is pretty neat. Yeah. So, um, uh, here, for example, we have used field sets to organize the content. So for very long, mm, very long and complex records, it's useful to group uh, fields in, in field sets so that you can you can also uh, decide if they can be closed or opened uh, or by default so, um, to help your editors to uh, remove the clutter if it's not needed. And uh, here, for example, we have added uh, an SEO settings field and in which you can customize the title, the description, and the uh, image, the OG image, if you want. And so if you don't specify these, by default, we try to guess them. Mm -hmm. So the title is the first uh, string that we find. The image is the first, first image that we find yeah. in the record. But otherwise, you can customize them. Yep. And uh, NST 
still in the React component, uh, we have um, some helpers so that you can uh, render your, uh, oh, your head. Oh, cool. Yeah. I was kind of wondering what the translation was, but yeah, you've got to render meta tags. That's super cool. Yeah, and 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 the cool thing is that this uh, SEO meta tags property, the underscore SEO meta tags mm -hmm. property, is always present. Okay. Uh, so in all the models, uh, it's all present. Even if you don't add an SEO field, if you add an SEO field, you can override what's uh, by default pre-populated by us. Um, otherwise, we try to guess and uh, and. And and so you can always rely on on this to to build your uh, your SEO uh, elements. Sweet. And so you've got uh, you showed the React uh, library. Is there mm -hmm. are there other packages for different frameworks? Yeah, we also have a view one. And while you're doing that, you got a comment from uh, Wise Jerk in the chat. Um, do you mind zooming in a little bit on the browser? Sure. A little... Sorry. Yeah, that's a good good call out. Sometimes it's easy for me. Like I've got a 27-inch monitor that I'm watching on, so it's easy easy for me to see plenty of it. Um, sure. Sorry. But I forget, forget sometimes that people uh, may not be on such a big screen. Uh, yeah, so we have a view, um, another component it's a view uh, the view component uh, we offer and these are the two that we maintain um, apart from that in the um, official documentation you can find um, uh, in the content management API uh, a JavaScript client and the Ruby client that we maintain mm -hmm. the JavaScript one especially I think it, it, it's the more it's more powerful and the more used as well um, and this is very useful to interact with the REST API. And um, it simplifies a lot of um, processes, as a, for example, like uh, image upload um, or retrieving a record with nested, uh, with, the, with the modular blocks, for example. All that mm -hmm. is uh, it's much easier if you use the client. And so with the client, you can build your own stuff if you want. Right? Cool. You can use it in plugins or uh, whatever. Awesome. Yeah, so going back to the CMS, I just wanted to show you as an example uh, the documentation section. So the one that we just we just saw here. So here we have like these four main sections, product overview, API reference, etc. And you can find the same sections here. And then, for example, in the general concepts, which is the submenu here, we have all these sections. Mm -hmm. And these sections are uh, modular blocks oh, great. with a link to a specific page so that you can, um, if you want, we can reorder them. Uh, we could specify probably um, since it's a title, uh, it's a link. You don't see an um, a preview here, but otherwise, if it was a text field, you could see a little preview here. So even if they are collapsed, you can see what they what mm -hmm. they mean. But then when you click on the on the link, you can see in, in a model the the record and edit it straight away. And so you can oh. you can create nested structures with links. Uh, links are very powerful, a very powerful tool. Uh, it lets you create arbitrarily complex uh, data structures, linked data structures. With oh. instead for now, the blocks are just one level deep. Uh, mm -hmm. So, okay, that's a link. this is great. The, I love the. I love the response to like, what are other ways you can use this? Well, let me show you how we're using it in multiple <laughs> different ways. Because you mentioned blog, then you've got docs, and you've got other. Yeah, um, for example, here that's it's a tree structure. Here you can mm -hmm. go you can go deeper if you want. That's uh, oh. mm, oh, mm, normally used for for the tree um, the the navigation structure of, of a website, um, or I don't know. We have 
uh, we have the plugins it's also interesting because we populate them automatically by fetching um, fetching all the plugins from npm all the all the packages on npm that starts with dato cms are automatically imported by a script oh, that cool. we run yeah um, and so if someone wants to share publicly a plugin they can just create an npm package and call it dato cms something and it will appear in in yeah. our list of plugins and then if we don't like it we can always disable it <laughs> yeah like uh, we can manually deprecate it normally happens that some plugins are just left yeah uh, behind and, and and so they stop working or they have yeah. problems so we disable them it's hard to it's easy to get started with something like that it's hard <laughs> to maintain it over the course of time yeah, uh, you get a question in the chat from Shandalus. um if you're do you have like is there a is there a item that you can use i guess you could build a, a custom one but something that you can use for addresses and if so does it uh does it correlate uh to give you like latitude and longitude coordinates as well uh yeah we have something like that let me show you how it works i love i also love when like there's questions in the chat and it's like can this can you do this and the answer is like absolutely yeah you can definitely do that let me show you how <laughs> so i'm just creating a new model so we don't mess up the other stuff but there's a oh, there's location, location yeah nice location field and i hope okay now it's working fine and it looks like this so um, you can make search nice and it will return latitude and longitude awesome and then I'm assuming that that data is also available when you query it. You can get the latitude and longitude. And yeah, the actual that's data. I'll show yeah. you. So we have this API Explorer here. And this is you can, um, so now we're getting into this is like the this is like a graphical thing where you're exactly uh, you got a real time uh, dashboard here to view all of your queries on the left. You can write a query in the middle, see the data on the right. So this is the mm -hmm. this is the GraphQL read only. Uh, version of the API for data CMS. Yeah, exactly. So um, this is a like a schema explorer that can help you move around your content. So it, it can help pre-computing the query. So it helps showing you what you can do, and then um, yeah, you can run the query and nice. You got it right there. The yeah, mm -hmm. love it. And that's useful also because you can you can know what you can do from here. So, for example, the SEO meta tags uh, object that I um, showed before. So here, and it's all docu it's auto documenting. So um, you can see all the different um, the queries that you can make. Queries that you can do, which types are there, uh, which types are uh, of, of all the fields, etc. You can you can go as deep as you want. It's all self documenting. One of the yeah, that's one of the beautiful things about GraphQL, especially with like a, a GraphQL Explorer. I know there's a few different ones. To see all that stuff there, everything that you could do, everything that you can query is is really awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a very and, powerful tool. Yeah, and it, it's something you come to expect. And it, it gives you, like I guess with um, with REST APIs, there's like um, Swagger is a good like documentation mm -hmm. tool for REST. Um, but I feel like nothing quite as interactive <laughs> as... <laughs> um, as these tools for GraphQL. Um, there's another question in the chat, by the way, which I think you kind of alluded to earlier, but if you want to uh, respond uh, to this one, this sure. is from Shell. Um, and Shell is asking, how does it support content for sites with multiple languages and locales? So I think this is getting into um, yeah. internationalization of your data. Yeah, I can, I can show you just a quick example. So um, here, for example, this site is a single locale for, for now. We can mm -hmm. add another one and then <clears throat> you need to specify uh, each field if it's translated or not yeah so you can uh, so for example the typical example is that you might want to keep the link for example not translated the author is going to be the same so you don't need to translate that field mm -hmm. while the content 
uh, must be translated. Thanks. So you got a little checkbox there to enable it. Yeah, and so now it has the little uh, icon. And so if you go to the back to the content, you can see the. Awesome. Oops. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Something broke. This is the this is the beauty of doing stuff real time. So what we were okay. expecting to see is the tab for you to edit the content in Italian, yeah. and then Let's you'd have see. you'd have both versions <laughs> there. <laughs> that works now. Yes. Okay, there we right. go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, uh, as you can see, like the author is going to say the same. Also the title because we didn't say it was translated while the content. Uh, disappears and you can start again nice. in Italian. I love that. You've got more support in the in the chat from Pokeballs. That, uh, he says, uh, why, Matteo, do you make this so easy? This is amazing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is the kind of cool. this is kind of support you want when you when you share a product publicly on a stream. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, also, we have all these the links that lets you move quickly from the content to the settings, also these uh, little nice links to make make your work faster. Um, so maybe one thing, one other thing I wanted to show before, uh, since we were in the um, in the API Explorer before moving on to um, the real time API, is the support for um, uh, for images. So, for example, here we have um, cover image, and like the standard URL field, like this. Can you see me? Yeah, uh, hear me. Yep. Yep. Sorry, okay, I'm just sorry. I'm. No, waiting fine. patiently I, i'm definitely no, here fine. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was i wasn't hearing anything uh, so uh, for example this is the standard url that you can get and it should actually preview it yeah oh if nice you hover, that's cool it previews. Yeah. and instead what we add is just a responsive image object which offers you a set of nice pre-made uh, things like sizes or set that you can specify and if you do that what we do is mm, send already a um, pre-made set of um, possible sizes and resolutions that make sense so we wow, are so in this... kind of guessing uh, yeah. stuff that makes sense for different resolutions but that and fully does the source set. And yeah, source so, set, do you want to explain for for people in HTML how source set is is used? Yes. So let me. I, I lost my. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. So this is the example. Um, let me just try to show you in the inspector. I hope. I hope you, we can zoom in. Okay. So what we do here is sending. Um, th this is what happens when you use our React component for images together with the responsive image uh, object. So we send a pre-computed set of possible. Uh, image resolutions. So the source set attribute um, let you sp um, specify a different set of images. Um, so we specify, for example, this is the um, full resolution image and then 75%, 50%, 25% of the image. And together with that, you should send um, a set of si sizes, possible sizes of the image. And so um, um, what happens is that if you have a smaller screen, the um, and these, sorry, I love that you're 
your so tools Italian. are in uh, Italian <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a default translation of Firefox. So. Yeah. <laughs> and so when when you get the images here, you get the you get the right resolution. So you don't get the two thousand by whatever image, but you get a close enough resolution. Mm -hmm. The closest resolution that we provide that makes sense. Like so, in this case, it's a thousand wide, thousand pixel wide. Uh, you can of course customize it to make it work a little bit better. This is just a easy guess. But the cool thing is that you already get a, a good enough behavior, so you don't get the full image. And um, yeah, uh, our lazy loading. Yeah, it's lazy loading, so you don't download images that are not viewed by the user okay. and also we provide the best format that the browser supports so this is thanks to imagex the image manipulation service that we use nice. internally uh, and so they they understand your browser and see if they support web if your browser supports webp they send you a webp otherwise a jpeg um and and so yeah it's uh, it's combining the um, all the best possible approaches that you can have yeah. and um, also as a preview we we send um, a base 64 so in, directly from the graphql api uh, we send um, a base 64 image that you can inline and this is a blurred up version of your image so okay. that when you are Let's so you see. can do like the see. fuzzy loading. Exactly. Let's thing. see. Yeah, I feel like you've got like each different way of doing image optimizations on the front end. You've got covered. Um, yeah. You if, could, yeah. If people saw the I like, don't know if you if, if you're not yeah but... the fuzzy fuzzy image first, and um, and then when you actually scroll to the image, it will log not log in. It will <laughs> it will go and get the the full resolution image. And I wanted to call yeah. out like the the source set stuff i don't know that i've seen other people do this where they generate the source set property in in the graphql data that comes back if you ask for it um but but source set is something that is part of html and then the browser basically based on those definitions that you pass it the browser will request the appropriate size image as best it can based on your definitions so yeah. you got um, data cms taking care of the source set for you and then the browser takes care of the rest and it's a pretty neat combination there Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the cool thing about preview, um, previewing already um, an SVG image is that you don't you don't cause any reflow in the page, mm -hmm. so it looks good on on the user. The page is already uh, fully rendered, but you don't waste any data transfer both on the user side and also on your uh, data CMS subscription. So you don't waste any no. money <laughs> if, <laughs> if images are not seen by anyone. Yeah. Um, and we had we had some questions about the image X um, sure. part about this. And uh, the first question was, what is it? And you mentioned like image X in this case is doing a little bit of the determining what what's the optimal image to send back. So WebP is a format that is traditionally smaller than other formats, but not all browsers support it. So one of the things it will do is as you ask for an image, it will check what browser is asking for it and send back the optimal version. Um, if it's available. The other thing um, that I would like for you to just share really quickly is like the query parameter idea of being able to pass mm -hmm. in flags to change the image. But then also a couple of questions associated with that. I uh, just want to make sure that people know, I think Spleen Teo um, has mm -hmm. clarified this in the chat, but um, you don't have to sign up for a separate account with ImageX and you this is all included in the free tier. So all the stuff that you talk about Right there in, yeah. the, in the free tier, no additional sign up or anything that you have to do. Exactly. Yeah, everything I'm showing you, it's included in the free tier, and so for example, you can you can set up the blog uh, exactly uh, as the one I'm showing in the free tier. There's not much. Uh, let me show you what we have in the pricing. So in the developer plan, uh, which is the free one. You can create up to three projects and have up to 300 records. You have some traffic included, API calls. I mean, a simple personal site is is plenty enough. Mm -hmm. um, but it, 
it, it's really not meant um, as a um, free free tier for personal projects is is mostly for testing because if you if you if you're stuck in here you need, if you need to upgrade the first step is quite can be quite big especially for um, small projects um i mean we are more geared towards at the, at the moment we are more geared toward uh like professional projects uh as we are a small team we need to we, we unfortunately cannot support a huge number of small customers right now so um, we are trying to focus on uh, companies or agencies uh, we are actually working on a new partner program uh, we are discussing with agencies right now freelancers the agencies are interested to find a way for making making uh, their work possible uh, while maintaining a great support uh, for all of them because we don't want to let anyone down so and we don't want to grow too quickly as well because it would not make our work <laughs> as nice as it is now oh so, <laughs> yeah it's a trade-off we need to take and yeah probably <clears throat> at some point we'll grow enough to make a smaller a uh, cheaper plan uh, but yeah for for now it's it's like this yeah i think uh, it's and the free tier i think is is definitely just kind of looking over at myself definitely um definitely good for people that are looking to try it out build a demo all that yeah kind of exactly so, uh, someone is using it for their own site it's just mm -hmm. that you need to be sure that you you are aware. going to fit yeah, yeah and then after that you you cannot uh you cannot simply add one more record <laughs> I mean, if you are in if you get in touch i can do that for you i mean if you need just like 50 more records that's fine yeah uh, we can do it but it's not something that we normally do Fair enough. Um, Avnish in the chat is uh, heading to sleep. Avnish is in India, so I think it's it's late there. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Uh, Pokeball yeah, says um, that would be me. Personal site migration coming over. So you've already got one convert. Cool. Cool. Uh, Pokeballs so who's looking to looking to migrate their site over, which thanks. is pretty pretty great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm just showing um, Imagix, the image manipulation service that we have embedded. Um, uh, I personally think their product is amazing and we are very, very happy with the integration with them. So I'm very happy to share, uh, to share them. And, uh, and so what you can do is passing query parameters to an image, uh, do all sorts of manipulations like this one that is showing in the homepage. So the typical ones are uh, resizing, for example, or, um, cropping or changing format uh, so these are the typical ones but you can do much more yeah so i don't know how much time we have left actually I just um to, uh, we've got uh, we don't have a like a hard stop um usually we go an hour hour and 10 minutes so i was thinking if you if you could show a little bit of like the real time exactly updates, yeah um and then we can then we could do a few minutes to close and see if there's any other questions yeah yeah, I showed that so you, we don't go over time. So um, that's a very simple example. Um, so let me open the right blog post, otherwise it doesn't make much sense. Okay, so this is the um, content behind uh, this post here. Uh, so in the banner above, you can see that this page is showing published content. So we have a two-stage uh, two system that you can say, for example, if you save, you go into uh, draft mode. So this record is now in draft. Um, and so you can then hit publish and it will be um, available on the, on the published API. And so if we go in preview mode, okay, it's now showing draft content. And what happens is that if I do a change here, Nice. It automatically up, um, updates on the on the page, 
and uh, you can change also the cover image for example I didn't show the media area is still something interesting and it updates nice. automatically so, yeah. yeah that's a good way for for you to edit content and see how it shows in the um, uh, in the in the preview uh, very quickly or for creating also uh, like live updates blogs where um, bec because these these um, updates can be done also to your end users it's not just me that i'm an editor i didn't log into anything mm -hmm. so you can just say um, enable these real-time updates abi to whoever is watching the site and so uh, each browser will have a um, uh, like a socket open to our api and uh, as soon as you change the content they will get get it updated and, and so maybe i can show you a little bit of the code how it works yeah if you um maybe zoom in a couple of times sure. in there too for people can you see uh, yeah i think that's good for me I th that's probably good for everybody else cool so um, this is an xjs project um just um, i'm just overviewing on how it works so here we have defined um a query for the index of the blog and so we have defined like the meta tags and getting all the blog posts etc and then what you can do is uh, if it's uh, not in preview mode so if you uh, you have like the initial the initial data is just a plain request. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what you do is um, create a, um, a subscription object here with more a bit more stuff with a GraphQL request, for instance. And then, so you always do a first GraphQL request to pre-populate the initial data, but then in the in the index we we use this use query subscription and that is provided by our react component and and this will uh, connect to our uh, real-time updates api let me show you the documentation there is a, some you had a couple of good reactions in the chat too when you did when you showed the real-time update which, by the way, th I think that page you were on um, has a video that kind of shows how this could be really useful yeah, if you were exactly. doing, like, if you were streaming updates from a conference. Um, so there's that video, and then there's one more that showed, like, if you were, uh, yeah, the event coverage. That video is really neat to watch because it's such a perfect example. Like, we we've all probably followed a conference as they announce stuff, and this is a great example of like just dump in more stuff and have it auto uh, reload in that page so that people will see. Uh, real time what the highlights are and what's being announced yeah and uh, there's uh, an example here somewhere i cannot find it right now by the way i had um spleen teo um has had a couple of comments which made me think that they might work for data cms do you know yeah he's uh he's part of the agency behind us okay awesome Linteo, uh, welcome and thanks for thanks for hanging out and providing some support. Um, yeah, I cannot find it right now, but uh, yeah, the idea is that we have a channel open with um, with our real time updates API, and the first call you do um, is to the GraphQL API. You get the content, and then the real time updates one gives you gives back um, mm -hmm. a subscription endpoint. Yeah. And you can uh, you can pull and get uh, and it's not polling is is uh, these server side um, events yep. that are sent back to the browser from our uh, elixir service uh, and and you can, as soon as there's a record update you get you get the the notification and and the graphql request is made again yeah and so you get the new content super neat the cool thing is that you don't really need to do much um, because 
uh, it, it's always GraphQL, so you don't need the, to, the data structure is exactly the same. You just need to add this little wrapper on top of it, and that's yep. it. It's all done. No, I, there's nothing else custom in, uh, in, in this project. If you don't want to use it, you just pass uh, back the initial data. Otherwise, yep. you pass the, this the subscription, subscription and, and it's done. Yeah. So it's very easy to that's add great. also. Yeah, that's perfect. I feel like that's so cool. For people, if, like from a learning perspective, I think doing some sort of real time stuff um, is really, really interesting and, and kind of neat. So the Node.js version of that socket.io is the, the pretty common package that people use. So if, if you're kind of learning front end, back end, and you've done some of the basic stuff and want to do something a little bit different, um, getting into uh, real time updates uh, is actually actually pretty cool. Um, you've also got a question. Um, I haven't seen this myself, so I'm I'm curious. Can you uh, can you schedule your posts? So can you do like a scheduled yes. date for them to go live? Yes, from here you yeah. can publish at specific time, and then I, I cannot show all the features. But what what you can do? <clears throat> I mean, let me just uh, do an example here. Okay, you hit. No, sorry. I did it wrong. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it marks as next publication. The next publication, you can you can remove that, and if you want, you can have. Nice. This is this is one of the things I was going to ask you about as well. Yeah, you can configure what we call build triggers um, we are kind of manually triggered webhooks um, we have some helpers to pre-configure like Netlify and Vercel and other uh, popular tools and once you have set that up you can automatically trigger a build when a record is uh, published so that's a typical use case you want to your website to be republished when when there's a scheduled publication and uh, it's all managed that's awesome. and like... otherwise you can publish manually by here, yeah by here and that that sort of stuff again the integration was really impressive to me of like not only not only can they go ahead and create source code for you and deploy to Vercel, then they have those things integrated into the dashboard here to trigger off a a build um, or to schedule build or to schedule posts and then have builds uh, be based on that. I think the integrations here are really pretty nice. Yeah, if you want to try um, with the starter projects, it's uh, all free and just with one click you set up the project. We set up the GitHub uh, repository, uh, set up the Vercel or Netlify deployment, and uh, and all the content as a set of. Uh, demo content in in the CMS, and you can start like the blog. I was showing before is just uh, it's just a click of a button here, and and in your dashboard you can pick the hosting you want, you connect, etc. Yeah, um, you also got a question, a request for you to do more of this. Uh, Pokeballs is asking if you stream. That they would be interested in uh, seeing features added live and and that sort of stuff. Do you ever do live streams on your own? Uh, no, we never did uh, before actually. And so, uh, <laughs> it's cool. We might we might do something uh, in the future. So we are thinking about setting up like as I was mentioning before a partner program, mm -hmm. um, and have a set of like one webinar a month in which we show. Mm, the existing features, maybe new features we recently launched, or mm, features that we are working on, and then have a maybe a Q and A section, a session at the end. Uh, so yeah, a live, a live moment with our partners, and then very likely publish it to yeah. for everyone else. Well, if I would say for people that might be interested in that, um, maybe go and and put a request tweet out there. And tag Dato CMS to say you sure. love you loved what you saw and you'd love to see more. I think that would be uh, that would be a great way to show support in that regard. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, 
this has been awesome. I think everybody in the chat agrees. Uh, I do uh, two things in closing. If you'd like to uh, share, the first one is like a soapbox. So if there's anything, um, I don't know if you remember submitting this on the forum, so I can I can call out what you submitted. Uh, but soapbox yes, is anything you want to kind of. Um, I, don't, I don't remember what I what I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was uh, this idea of anything you want to uh, share. Uh, that uh, that you're really passionate about, that you're excited about. And uh, so f- in the submission, you put um, that you are setting up your own uh, little server for file storage uh, right, and right. Uh, very low a... tech and low consumption. You want to share yes. a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, that's a nerdy, nerdy thing I'm, I'm very <laughs> excited about. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to try to set up like uh, the tools that I'm using in a um, in a private environment, so I have, I have a very good connection here, like a one gigabit connection, upload and download here in in my office. So I said, well, I'm mostly not using it. Why I don't set up here something that can help me uh, be independent from the big tech that I don't like too much, and so um, I found this project here that I highly recommend. It's uh, why you know host. And um, uh, see, yes, it's in Italian by default. Uh, let me see if I can switch it in English. Yes. You want me to should I add the screen back on? Oh, if you want or adjust otherwise. Uh, yeah, I can send do that. the link. Okay. Yeah, so this project is an open source um, project you can install. For example, I've installed it on my Raspberry Pi. And uh, it has a set of services that you can um, you can manage. Uh, a lot of them, actually. Um, yeah, for example, I'm using now SyncThing uh, as a Dropbox replacement. All this tries to be nice. And I love... I love trying to read some of this. So I, I speak Spanish fairly well, and there's so much overlap. Like, I could actually read probably a decent yeah. amount of the Italian just because it's so Yeah, similar. yeah, yeah. Norm- normally, if you if you read, you can you can mm-hmm. kind of understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, th- these are, like, a set of projects. They are not all that are supported. And so I started with sync thing. I wanted to have my own data, my own files managed by myself and then i'll probably try this also hosting my own email server in the nice future i don't know <laughs> but the cool thing i really like is that with all the um, uh, energy waste that i think goes on in the massive data centers that are being built uh, on in, around the polar circle etc and then all the massive data centers that you see. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this just with a Raspberry Pi uh, and uh, a couple of old disks that I had. I set yeah. up my own uh, uh, software ride and, uh, and a backup at home with the same setup. And so it's, and it's very stable. I mean, I've been using that for a while now. It's very reliable and I highly recommend you to try uh, whoever is interested. Yeah. So yeah, reach out if you want. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I feel like that'd be that'd be a great conversation for people to have. Um, someone else suggested Pokeball suggested looking at Home Lab OS too. Um, cool. I don't know if you've heard of that one, but that's that's really yeah. neat. I I kind of like, um, I like the idea of all that stuff, like doing it on your own. I don't know if don't know if you'd replace everything, but uh, having the ability to to have more control over that sort of stuff is pretty neat. Yeah, it's on the making. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so the the last thing is if you have like a community shout out, and I can also refresh your memory of what you added there. You mentioned uh, free code camp as a source for people to learn. Yes. You want to? Yes. Yes. Uh, just give a so yeah. Pre COVID, I was uh, holding a weekly meeting in a co working space in uh, in Turin, my my city, uh, where I was um, teaching people to code um, from the beginning, so from from scratch. Um, and uh, I was helping out mainly um, using Free Code Camp, which is um, a free website, completely free, open source as well, uh, where you can learn how to code in uh, in JavaScript. They also, I think, they are very interesting 
uh, also for for the jump stack space because the what what they are teaching is is really fitting uh, like some uh, basic uh, HTML and CSS and plain JavaScript then you can move on to react and then there's some API side so I think it's all very very fitting uh, and it's a good way for for people that are not very skilled in coding to get started or pick up new mm -hmm. uh, new concepts I, I, and, and the community is very very active I mean it's amazing how much stuff they're putting online uh, the YouTube channel is crazy I highly recommend them yeah that's great that's always like people are like what do I get started free code camp is, is definitely one of the ones that I recommend people yeah. go to as well and they've they've collaborated with um, so I'm in a discord with other um, youtubers and content creators and they've a lot of them have collaborated with free content to do or free content free code camp to do uh crash courses and things like that i've actually done a um a vs code crash course um that they cool. have so that was that was kind of cool to be on on their youtube channel as well um so yeah, yeah definitely cool. definitely check them out um at free code camp and um, i'm glad this went this seems like it went really really well every question people had in the chat you were immediately like yes we can do that and people seem to really enjoy the implementation lucky. the design <laughs> yeah lucky yeah we 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 next that's what we should do in the future is just stage all the questions for the e yeah do exactly GraphQL? <laughs> why yes we do support well, GraphQL. Well, <laughs> but yeah i think it, all it, fake. Um, yeah <laughs> i think it i think it worked out perfectly though um so anyway, um, thanks everyone for hanging out in the chat and for having questions and that sort of stuff. Mateo, thanks for uh, coming on and, and sharing with us about Data CMS. Cool. Thank you very much for the invite. Yeah. I will, see you soon. Uh, yeah, I'll call it now. We'll see you soon. Thanks everyone for being here. Cool. Bye-bye.